Hello again everyone. Time to start on another TV Restore. This is a Philco Predicta Tandem. The Tandem had the, the 25 foot cable that attached to the, the box, if you would call it that, where you do your channel selection, volume and all of that. And then the cable ran over to a picture tube and you could put the picture tube wherever you wanted it in your room as long as you were as long as you were within 25 feet of the of the main tv so let's talk about the good things on this tandem uh, it is uhf which that is kind of a rare option so that's that's really good and the knob is there which is even better because these are impossible to find original antenna is still there now the inside this came loose like they typically do but we have the inside part it was still still there so that's good cabinet looks decent Grill cloth will work when we're doing anything to it. Channel selector, fine tuning, on off, and contrast knobs are still there. We are missing a horizontal knob on the side. Still have the original back. Uh, we got a little Shoot place down here, but it's not hurt anything. Of course, here's the, the jack that the 25 foot cable plugs into on the back of the set. Uh, this cabinet, I think this has paint specs on it, what it looks like. So, hopefully, we can clean it up. I'm not mistaken this is a photo finish in other words it's a painted on wood grain finish so can't do a whole lot to that other than clean it definitely don't want to try to do any stripping or anything because that's not real wood now this is wood around the front and we are going to do something to that we'll strip it down and put some fresh finish on it make it look better all right, let's examine the chassis just a little. Uh, just looking at this circuit board, looks to be pretty much original. Has all the tubes. There's a UHF tuner. The shaft coming out the side. I've removed the chassis antenna, so we're down to just a pretty much a bare cabinet. Have you noticed what else is missing? Yep, we have no legs. And when I bought this. I knew there was no legs on it, but they did have some rubber feet on the bottom. So apparently whoever used this last was just using it, setting it on a table, hence the rubber feet. But I do want to put this back as close to original as I can. So I'm going to be making some legs for this. And I'll be doing it strictly based on pictures I found online as far as dimensions, height, width, and all of that. But we'll cover that later. We want to get all the electrical portion restored. And then we'll be doing we'll be doing that cabinet work. We're going to build some legs and hopefully I can make them look like the originals, at least close. So that's one bad thing about this predict a tandem. No legs. 
I've taken off the front shield and the, and the rear cover here on the CRT so I could number one test the CRT a little easier and then see if it was an original by looking at the, the part number on the side of it. There's the rear cover, uh, the gold band it's in good shape. The arms on the cover they're gonna need a little attention but and there's the front shield just have it stowed away in a safe place it looks pretty good it does have some scratches in it and I think we can polish it up and make it look a little better but here's the main problem the cable that's supposed to be 25 feet long It's about six feet. Why someone would, would cut that 25 foot cable unless it had a bad chewed place in it or you know a cut or something. But anyway, that's what we have. We have a six foot cable. So we're gonna to have to find us a, an original 25 foot cable. Uh, I've contacted a couple of guys, the predictor experts, and hopefully we can find that from one of those guys. And here's the rear of the CRT. It is an original 21 EAP4. 2.34 volt. So I'm going to test the CRT. I do know that the filaments are okay because I've had the chassis hooked up and, and the tubes do light up so the filament string is complete which tells me that the, the CRT filaments are good but let's hook it up to the CRT tester and see what we have to work with okay Sencor CR70 and if we look up the 21 EAP4 we need socket 4 which I do have and then our switches on the filaments should be set on 1 and 8 and then 732 on the cathode G1 and G2 so we're 1, 8, 7, 3, 2 of course we're on black and white our bias should be on minus 36 Of course, the filament we want it. We'll probably have to go to the three volt scale. We're going to start out on the two volt, but usually you have to go up to the next scale to get 2.3 volts. And we need socket four, which it is right here. Three on one side, four on the other. All right, let's hook our tester up. See what we get. Alright, we're on a two volt scale. We can only get about less than two volts when the CRT lights up. And we do have filaments. Run our adjustment all the way down. We'll go to the three volt scale. And now we can set it for 2.3. Right in there. No heater cathode shorts, no G1 shorts. Cut off, eh, a little touchy, but seems to be adjusting. Well, we got pretty good emission. Probably got a picture tube that will produce at least produce a picture. And I haven't tested any of the tubes. Uh, Fusistor is open. I just got a fusistor jumped in there with some test leads. I think I'm gonna go ahead and just do a power up. Uh, 
don't don't believe we're going to hurt anything because we're using the Syncor PR57 and if we see any excess current we can power down really quick keep an eye on that so let's see what we get well while we had good sound and no high voltage had a bad damper tube so it's just a fusistor and a new damper tube we've got a picture and good sound volume control scratchy as expected it's really encouraging first first try and we have a picture now of course we need to restore this chassis we'll pull this board out install new cup plates and caps we'll check all the resistors we'll change the electrolytics There's our thermistor down in there. I think you can see it. The fusistor that controls the filaments. We'll change it also. Hopefully I can find a replacement cable. I think I can. If I can talk the Philco guys some out, of, out of one of them. I know they like to keep parts and I don't blame them a bit for that. But hopefully we can come up with one. Uh, looking at this base, yeah, it's in bad shape. Wood separated where it was joined there. But when we replace the cable, we'll have to take that base off to run the cable through it. So we'll work on that at that time. Pretty happy with that picture tube working as good as it's working. Now with the LED lights on down here, you know, it's really bright down here in the shop. It's, it's not a very good picture then, but in, in a normally lit room, I think it'll work fine. I have a new CRT over there in that box. It's about an inch longer on the neck. For sure, it would stick out the back, of the, and I'd have to make some kind of a spacer. And that's possible. You know, it would give me a really good picture with a new tube, but... But we're gonna we're gonna try to use this old one if we can. And an interesting thing that this CRT base has, I think you can see it. That's a phono jack, and that's an external speaker jack. Right, yes, there was. The list is here. Would you read it to the court, please? So the theory behind that is, wherever you take the CRT head. You can take your little speaker to plug into this jack, and that way your sound is with the picture rather than being across the room. And I do have something planned for that. I've got a Philco speaker that I think was made for these. Uh, I'm not, not sure on that, but it looks like it was designed for this particular set. And we're going to try to restore it and clean it up where it's working okay and we can plug it into this jack right here. See you next time and thanks for watching. We hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button and we'd love it if you would subscribe to our channel. Thanks.